So you've now mastered electron configurations as well as uh, have a strong understanding of the nucleus and the electrons within an atom. So now we're going to move on to Lewis dot structures and ion formation. What you see here is a sodium atom. You know uh, sodium has 11 electrons. Of those 11, you have your core atoms, which are shown here in the blue and the orange shells. And then you have your one lone valence electron shown in pink. Now, in order to become really stable, sodium needs to get rid of that poor lonely electron. In order to do that, it can become an ion. And so by losing it, sodium goes from sodium as a neutral molecule to sodium that lost an electron, that of sodium, which is plus one. It's plus one because it lost an electron. So now it has 10 electrons, but it has 11 protons. So 11 minus 10 gives you your one. But now it's turned into an ion. So whenever we're thinking about how can we turn any of these cations or any of these elements into cations or anions, we need to be thinking about how many electrons does it have and how many does it need in order to become stable. So for instance, here is our periodic table. We see lithium over here. Lithium has three electrons in its outer shell, I mean three electrons total, and then it has one, which is why I circled the one right here. One electron is a valence electron. In order to become stable, lithium is going to lose that one electron in order to be more like helium. It makes more sense for it to lose it. Whereas fluorine over here has seven valence electrons. It makes more sense for it to just gain one electron instead of losing seven. And so it's going to gain one electron and be converted into ne neon. It is that process by which all of these elements can then become ions. Well, not all of them, because you have some that are more like carbon here, where carbon has four electrons in the outer shell. So if I were to ask the question, is it easier to lose electrons and become like helium, or easier to gain electrons and become like ne neon, there's really no good answer to that, because it's four and four, which is why carbon is typically not involved in ionic bonding, but instead covalent bonding. Here is a whole bunch of Lewis dot symbols for different elements. And so what you'll notice is that Lewis dot symbols, that's just a simple way to say, where are the valence electrons? How are they located? So as we just talked about, lithium has one valence electron, so it's shown here with a dot. Whereas fluorine has seven valence electrons, and neon and helium have their, their shells filled. Now remember, helium is very happy with two. It only wants two. But everywhere else wants to have eight electrons to become happy. And so when you're looking at these, notice that groups, remember they share attributes. Everything in group 1A has one electron in its valence shell, whereas group 2A has two, and so on and so forth. And so this Lewis dot structure symbols are just simply to help you readily see how many valence electrons are available for what we're going to learn later is about bonding. All right, so out of these Lewis structures that you see, one of them is incorrect. So let's think about it and let's try and figure out which one. So A has carbon. Carbon has four electrons shown. It is in group 4A, which means it does have four electrons, so that is correct. B, chlorine, is shown to have seven electrons around its, around its symbol. Is chlorine in group 7A? Yes, so that is also correct. But what about lithium? Lithium is shown here. It's shown to have two. If it were to have two, it should be over here where beryllium is, but it doesn't. Lithium should have one dot around it, which means lithium is the incorrect one. Just for kicks and giggles, let's check nitrogen. Nitrogen is shown with five electrons, and it is in group 5A. All right, so here's kind of a summary of what I was telling you earlier about if lithium has one electron, it's going to lose one electron and become positively charged. Beryllium has two electrons, it's going to want to lose two and become positively two charged. Oxygen needs two, so it's going to gain two electrons, thus becoming negative two. And so you can quickly utilize the periodic table as a cheat sheet of sorts to see what electrons um, or what charge an atom is going to be when it turns into an ion. I recommend pulling out your periodic table and writing on top of it, circling those valence numbers, those group letters, the 1As, the 2As, and then writing on top of it, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, minus 2, and minus 1. Notice I didn't really label 4A and 5A, and that's because they are most commonly used in covalent bonding. And also I didn't circle 8A because they're already happy, so they're not going to be involved in bonding for the most part. 
All right, so now, what do Lewis structures look like for ions? We've already looked at what Lewis structures look like for elements, but now what about ions? So if I have sodium here with one electron shown, if I remove an electron and turn it into an ion, it is going to look like this, sodium with a positive charge. And that's literally what the Lewis structure looks like for it. You would just write Na with a plus. But what about chlorine now? We have chlorine with seven electrons. And so if chlorine becomes an ion, what's going to happen to it? It's going to gain one electron. So its Lewis structure then is shown twofold. One with the electron dot still around it, all eight of them to show that it now has a full octet and a negative charge. So you need to show both the dots and the negative. Just for another one for practice, calcium. Is it going to lose two or is it going to gain six? it's going to lose two, becoming calcium with the two plus charge. All right, so practice this. You can pretty much pull up any of your elements that are on your periodic table and practice and just see if you can predict what ion it's going to form and then write the ionic Lewis structure for it. Now go read section 4.3 and 4.4.